guys, it's Shalene Johnson with Mailbag Friday, which I have not done so long. There's just so much to catch you up on that if I don't do it now, it's just I don't know when I will. In fact, I, I don't even know where to start because there's been a bazillion questions since the last time I did a mailbag. deal with mailbags. Mailbags are my own personal little joy. It's my opportunity to, you know, be funny and vent and like um, answer your silly questions. It's not a requirement. So I have to get my work done first before I can do my, ba my the mailbags because they take a long time to edit, blah, blah, blah. So that's why we've been doing mailbags. We really long time to keep ahead camp. And then I had an idea. And then I had to do a bunch of stuff for Triple Fire. And then we took a bunch of stuff for Triple Fire lunch party. And then we took a vacation to Michigan where I brought four ribs. Right, and Monica is still injured. She's wearing a neomobilizer. We'll talk about that later. Um, and then we're like, then we have another family vacation. Eh. There's just been so much that I haven't had a chance to do one in so long. <sighs> See? Christ Christmas lights in September. You can take the girl out of Michigan, but you can't take the Michigan out of the girl. The number one question I keep ask, being asked is, Shaleen, is it true you got an iPhone? I did. Simmer down, okay? Calm down. I don't, I don't even want to hear one, I told you so. Please. I mean, so I joined your little iPhone cult church, okay? I drank the Kool-Aid, and I'm in the cult, and I realize that now I'm a member of the church. I can never leave, or my life will be over. I'll never see my children again. But I joined your little iPhone church, and yes, okay, fine. I mean, seriously, it is an amazing, amazing little device. I freaking love it. I love it. I don't want to admit that here, though, but it is, it's amazing, Holy cow, it's, woo, it's like a whole new world. Wow, woo, I am in the church. Holy, I swear to you, I'm the new pastor because this phone freaking rocks. Wow. I know the big deal was I didn't want to switch because everyone told me that I wouldn't get coverage here, but you know, then I thought about it. I don't really care for drops calls anyways because who talks on the phone, right? I mean, everybody just texts. Talking so 2009, do I, re in fact, sometimes are you with me? It's kind of, it's like to your benefit when the call gets dropped, you're like, whoops, sorry, call got dropped. And then and then they call back and you pretend like you're still in a bad area. Uh, Shalane, are you enjoy, enjoying the Jersey Shore? I know you're such a big fan. We had Wynn Claybaugh speak this year at Camp Dumore. He's the author of the book called Be Nice or Else. Anyways, um, he talked about how you really shouldn't watch negative reality TV shows because that's just like inviting negativity into your head. And I agree with him, but I really don't feel like the Jersey Shore is negativity. You know what I mean? I really feel like it's more comedy. Are you with me? I mean, it is, I can't get enough. Jay Wow and the situation and, oh. Snooky with her hair and the outfits. I mean, these people are, it's, um, it's such good comedy. I really don't consider it negativity. I consider it comedy. I hope you're with me. The reality TV show, though, that I'm willing to give up is um, Hoarders. I felt like it was going to kind of be like Intervention, which I love, by the way. I love Intervention. But Hoarders, I'm like, I'm over it. It's the same show every single time. It's a ginormous mess with cockroaches and rats and a cuckoo crazy person, and family who's upset and, and can't handle it anymore, and then they clean the house, but you still feel like the person's cuckoo crazy because they're really not addressing the problems, and the houses are just disgusting, and they clean it out, and here's how it always goes. The person like doesn't want to throw anything away, and they show that, and they show the cleaning crews coming in, and then they show the people coming in trying to help them sort through it all, but you know they're going to start collecting in like five minutes. Thank you to all the people who tweeted on my iPhone that I should be able to get a kickstand on my bike. Well, apparently I can't because I contacted the people at the bike store today and, and for, it's embarrassing. I had to call anonymously because when I bought my bike, I accidentally asked, I got a road bike, like a good road bike. Um, but I'm not going to race or anything. It's for a workout. It's because sometimes I like to do a workout that's non-impact. So, I, you know, but I'm not a cyclist and I'm not going to enter any races. It's a workout. So I bought a great bike and I'm like, uh, th this one doesn't have a kickstand. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, like the whole place erupted in laughter. I'm like, oh, I was kidding. <laughs> kickstand, please. I knew you don't put a kickstand on a bike. But then honestly, I'm like, I leave and I'm like, what do I do when I'm done with a bike? I just lay it on its side. It's a nice bike.
It's stupid. Give me a friggin' kickstand. If we can put a man on the moon, we can make a very lightweight kickstand. What's the big deal? So I called today anonymously because I don't want them to like think that I'm that dumb girl who bought the bike who wants a kickstand. And I'm like, yeah. Um, so um, I have this friend who, um, <laughs> she isn't a cyclist or anything. But, and and, and uh, anyway, she's got a bike and she really wants a kickstand. And once again, they laughed and they're like, no, it would ruin the bike. It would wreck the frame and, and it weighs the bike down and then you'd go so much slower and that's the whole, I don't care if I'm going slower. Three ounces is not going to make a big deal. As a matter of fact, I'm doing it for a workout. So maybe I want the bike heavier. Can I get a kickstand? I'd like a basket too while we're at it. Shaleen, how come Monica didn't go to Seattle with you? We thought she was. Um, well, back to our little 4th of July vacation that we took together, which you may have heard. Uh, I broke four ribs, count them, four ribs. It was ridiculous. I broke so many ribs this year. And I asked the doctor, I go, listen, you know, you know Dr. Legome because you've seen him in other videos, right? And so I said to him, I go, listen, doc, I mean, th do you think it's, could I have some kind of disease or something? I've broke like six ribs this year and damaged a liver. Is there some do you think there's something wrong with my rib cage? Like, what is going on? This is not normal, right? And he goes, well, at a certain age. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. You can stop right there, Dr. Legome. At a certain age. A certain age you. So, anyways, oh, I digress. Anyways, um, that was in a boating accident. We were being pulled behind the boat by a tube. It was me, my sister, Turbo Sister, and Monica Gray, my BFF. It was the first day of the vacation, and my dad was whipping us around. Wow, wow. He's a crazy man. And he, I mean, he was going a thousand miles per hour, nautical miles per hour, that is. And we went flying, and I landed face first, and my back flipped over, and I like, I felt like a crack in the middle of my rib cage, and I was just like in the water. Water, out of breath, like the wind had completely been knocked out of me. I was like, <gasps> and I, I was like, I just broke my spine. This is crazy. But none, nonetheless, I had just, just uh, broke four ribs and had a concussion and a cervical neck strain. My dad feels really bad, by the way. I didn't know he felt bad that week, but since then he, he wrote me like a really sweet apology letter. Um, my sister also hurt a rib. She kind of like strained a rib, but she was okay. And then Monica like smacked her knee and we were like, whatever, you're not hurt. You're fine. And she acted like she was fine for weeks, but she kept saying, my knee is still bugging me. We're like, save it, sister. And um, here it is, September. That happened July 4th. And she just went to the orthopedic surgeon. And he found that her knee was still swollen from the accident. That there was, I can't remember the medical term, but there's like an accumulation of blood in her knee. And so he had to put her in a full leg immobilizer and she can't move her leg. But she's still trying to teach, which is ridiculous. And I'm going to get it on video because you won't even believe how ridiculous it is. And she's going to have major muscle imbalances. Anyways, my point is that I have made it my mission, and I'm going to put it out to the universe right now, that I will not, did you hear me? I will not have any injuries for the next 12 months. I'm going to stay injury free. Mark my words. I love you. I mean it. I'm so sorry I haven't been here in a while, but I promise I'm going to get right back onto these. Don't forget, you have to leave me a comment. It's like my tip jar. If you don't leave me a comment, I don't know you've been here. And if you do leave me a comment, I promise I'll reply back to you. And if you leave me your Twitter handle, I'll give you a Twitter on shout out. What up? Love you. Mean it. See you next time. Sun setting. <laughs>